In this video, we will continue to talk about rendering in uh, V-Ray for Cinema 4D. But this time we're gonna concentrate on animation and we're gonna see some of the tools and parameters that we can use here in V-Ray in combination with some other tools that we have in Cinema 4D. So we went through a different types of scenarios. We, will, we saw how to create an exterior render and to use some tools here, like the, the four for the grass, HDRI, and other uh, parameters for the quality of the render. We saw how we can also create nice uh, interior renderings using natural light, artificial light, light mix, which is an excellent tool to manage everything, all the lights that you have in the scene to uh, create something real balanced. We saw how we can create effects like depth of field uh, in steel images, or also we can use it in um, animation, and also how to use bloom and glare and some additional camera effect. So basically how we can replicate some realistic effect of the cameras, so what they do actually in real life. And also here we use the fur and the rounded corners to uh, add those little fine details that are always helpful to create realistic images. And here, uh, we in the previous video, we talked also about the motion blur and the animation. So we're gonna get back to this topic, we're gonna add some more information, and then we will proceed with environmental effects, which can be used also for some advanced uh, animation and video effects. So. Right here, we, we are seeing the motion blur effect in action. So this is a camera. It's all about camera settings, just like the depth of field. The motion blur, it's about the shutter. And in this case, is given by the shutter speed. So if your shutter speed is really slow, you can get this effect. If your shutter speed is really fast, you won't see any motion blur. So the first thing you need to do is to fix the parameters in your camera, in the in your physical camera, tag in uh, Cinema 4D, or the other option to create this effect for animation is to bypass the camera. So right now you can see that I am outside the camera that I have created because the aim is not white. So here I can set everything up from the camera properties or I can go into the overrides in the render settings. So in the, in the other videos we used HDRI and we, we had kind of nice reflections in materials, in reflecting materials using that and the dome light as well with the HDRI. So we will leave this uh, setting here but let's go here and check the V-Ray overrides again. This is where actually we changed also the environment override to override the dome light. Now, just in a similar way, we can override cameras. So we can use cameras and physical uh, camera of V-Ray, or instead we can also use here the camera override. You can see I can activate the motion blur which is gonna end the depth of field, which is gonna add the blur um, based on the distance, as we saw in another video using the physical V-Ray camera tag, or we can again activate motion blur. So you either use it in the camera by adding the V-Ray physical camera tag, or you can adjust and manage the effects from here, and this is gonna override the camera, the standard Cinema 4D camera. Now remember that if you want to have the motion blur also moving the camera, you need to activate camera motion blur. So the standard motion blur, it's only for the objects. The camera motion blur, it's also for the cameras. And you also have a bunch of parameters here, which I'm not going to go through, but you can check them in the uh, manual as usual. So if you want to have more information, know a little bit more about these parameters and what they do, they just work on the motion blur effect. They're gonna adjust it a little bit. And I think that the most important parameter is duration. Now make sure it's not at zero or at 10 because it's not gonna be good. 
So try to leave it to one or two frames. But you can run some render tests using the interactive rendering and you can define a little bit better the effect. And it's, it's like using depth of field and all the other parameters. Now here we can override geometry as well, like the displacement. If we want to use the displacement or not, we can decide it from here. Also the lights, if you want to use or disable, for example, self-illumination or uh, set a limit for the number of lights. And also for materials here, we can enable and disable some of the effects or like the most uh, heavy effects like the subsurface scattering or others as you see, see here. And also here we have other parameters for the textures, for the rendering, and we saw previously how we can manage the environment. And again, probably the environment together with the camera tab is the most important because we can basically define what our scene is going to look like if it's going to be an exterior an interior or day or night or if we want to do a green screen or set another background and so on so it's probably the most important now we still we're still going to be here in the overrides tab because if we go uh well let's see here yes so we are using right now the hdr i'm going to leave this that we used in the previous video. I'm not going to change it, but we're going to go here to the last tab, which is the volumetrics. And I'm going to enable the volumetrics. Volumetrics are really nice effects that we can use for still images, we can use for animation. Uh, they can be helpful to create some really cool effects, some really, uh, let's say, kind of movie effects or scenographic effects and I'm gonna show you how you can use it in exteriors and also later in interiors. Now, if we go here, you can see that we have a volume grid and an environment fog. Now, the volume grid is for effects like fire or smoke, and you can get those from other software, basically, and you can load them up here in uh, V-Ray. The environment fog, instead, we can work with that right here directly in V-Ray. So just to show you some examples here of environment fog, I'm going to go into the web and associated with the volumetric fog, we also have the effect called volumetric light, which is going to generate this nice, um, let's say, beams of light. So it's kind of the beam of the light is going to be visible, uh, more visible than the average because it's like we are in a really smoky room or in a fog situation or mist situation. So when we use lights in a situation like that, the the light is going to be more visible. And again, you have many examples here. You can see here how, how the street lights are looking and all the other lights. Now, this is a really simple rendering, but it's uh, helpful to uh, show you what we are talking about. So you can see there is this kind of mist or fog or smoke effect and those lights there that are going to appear uh, more visible than usual. So let's start here with the environment fog. Now you can see here that when we apply the fog it's going to look like a thick uh, sea of uh, smoke which is going to basically hide everything except what's uh, above because this is, we can also set a height for the, for the fog. So let's select the environment fog object and let's go down here and let's start to change some parameters. For example, the distance, which is gonna define where the fog is gonna start, starting from our point of view. So 10 centimeters is really near. So let's try to increase this to 1000 centimeters. So it's kind of uh, 